Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about photobiomodulation and the gut microbiome. What we're going to do is just discuss a little bit about what photobiomodulation is, how we can use it to support the health of our gut microbiome, and I'm going to share with you some of the research just to prove that this is an evidence-based consideration when we are wanting to improve or optimise or maintain good gut health. So first off, let's just consider that the majority of information out there is very much food and supplement centric. Most of us believe that food is the primary uh, component or environmental input that is going to manipulate our microbiome. And to some degree, that is absolutely true. So we need to be thinking about a diverse diet. We need to be thinking about eating plenty of polyphenols, prebiotic foods and dietary fiber as a way to support our microbiome. And we can consider various supplements dependent on the context of our health, ranging from probiotics to prebiotics to postbiotics and also symbiotics. And I've done a video um, on the difference between these different types of supplements that I will share in this video as well. But what we also need to appreciate is that research is starting to show us that our circadian biology or our circadian rhythm is one of the most important environmental inputs maintaining, hopefully, a healthy microbiome, but also potentially maintaining an unhealthy microbiome for that matter as well. And our circadian rhythm is that 24 hour body clock that we all have. What is the main environmental input that helps maintain a healthy circadian rhythm? Well, it's our light environment. It's getting exposed to full spectrum sunlight at various points throughout the day as an input to tell our cells what time of day it is and therefore what should be happening within our physiology. So we can use photobiomodulation, which is ultimately the use of infrared and near-infrared light to support a diverse, healthy gut microbiome. So that is what photobiomodulation is, the use of specific frequencies of light, infrared and near-infrared, um, and that's it, it's very simple. And we can do this using lamps like the one behind me. So part of my morning routine would be to use the lamp in the kitchen while I'm having my coffee. And all I'll do is I'll have it on the kitchen surface and what that means is that the lamp is essentially at tummy height. I will take my shirt off and that means that there's no real obstruction. I'm gonna maximizing the benefit of the red light therapy. And I'll stand about 10, 12 inches away from the device and literally shine it on my tummy. Uh, and that is going to be having a positive impact on the microbiome. Now let's look at a paper to show you some of the evidence that is out there around this. So when we look at this paper, this is a case study. It's important to appreciate that at this point in time, there isn't an abundance of research on humans. More of it has been done on animals at this point in time, but we're now at that point where we're starting to see more research come out in humans, and it absolutely aligns with what we're seeing in the research in animals. So with this case study, this individual um, actually had nine stool samples taken. They had their microbiome tested on nine separate occasions, three times before any treatment, three times after radiotherapy and commencement of immunotherapy for breast cancer, and three times after photobiomodulation therapy or treatment. Now, what did they find? They found that there was an increase in acomansia, Fecalibacterium and Roseburia. These three bacteria are all referred to as keystone species within the gut, which essentially means they're really important and they have quite prominent roles to play within actually maintaining a healthy gut microbiome. But not only that, what I find really interesting is the researchers found a reduction in some of the potentially pathogenic or bad organisms that are quite frequently associated with actually triggering certain symptoms uh, associated really with irritable bowel syndrome. So bloating, abdominal pain, or changes to bowel movements. So this case study just gives us some direct evidence that using photobiomodulation 
can have a really positive impact on sort of both sides of the seesaw, as it were, supporting the good guys and reducing the potentially problematic guys at the same time. Now, this shouldn't be that surprising in some ways when we also consider that red light therapy, and we've known this for decades, has an anti-inflammatory benefit. And we know that there is this relationship between inflammation and the state, the health of the gut microbiome. So as inflammation goes up within the body, not just in the gut, generally speaking, you will see an increasingly more dysbiotic microbiome. And as the inflammation comes down, the dysbiosis the normalizes ultimately. You come back to a symbiotic eubiotic sort of state. And we see this again in humans, whereby those with inflammatory bowel disease are given an anti-inflammatory medication that puts their inflammatory bowel disease occasionally into remission. And by default, there is an improvement, an increase in the diversity and abundance of the microbiome. Now, they haven't done anything directly on the microbiome. They've been eating their normal diet. They haven't been taking a prebiotic or anything like this. So again, that is direct evidence to show us that the, our inflammatory state is impacting the microbiome. And one of the ways red light therapy might help support a healthy gut microbiome is therefore through improving our systemic inflammation. Now, another thing to consider here is that to maintain a healthy gut lining and a healthy microbiome is incredibly energy intensive. We need good amounts of energy to have a healthy microbiome which gets us thinking, if you are suffering with some form of chronic fatigue, are you able to have a healthy, diverse microbiome until you've actually resolved or improved the energy deficit, so to speak, that you are in at a cellular level? One of the primary mechanisms of photobiomodulation is the improvement in energy production at that cellular level. We're improving energy capacity, which is going to have an impact on our capacity to maintain or develop a healthy gut microbiome. So that is just, you know, one of the ways that we can think about this ultimately. I am a huge advocate of using red light therapy on a daily basis. Now, something that is really important to mention within this video is you can do this for free by getting outside. And you know, whenever possible, whenever appropriate, if you're comfortable to, taking your shirt off and you know, exposing as much of your skin as possible to that full spectrum sunlight, which is going to include obviously infrared light. Now, there are two points in the day where infrared light is at its peak. And as you can imagine, probably, this is sunrise and sunset. The reason that we can see that beautiful red horizon and sometimes red clouds at sunrise and sunset is because there is an abundance of infrared light being emitted at that point in the day. So whenever you can, getting outside at sunrise and sunset, which I appreciate is really hard, especially at certain times of the year here in the UK, but that is a way that you can actually support a healthy, diverse gut microbiome. And it might mean that we can put just a little bit less emphasis on the diet. It certainly means we might be able to relax a little bit, knowing that there are other ways that we can actually support gut health. Those of you struggling with constipation, hand on my heart, one of the best interventions I have ever found for this is getting outside at sunrise, sunrise on a consistent basis. And again, I know for some that's impossible. I have two very young children at the moment. It's sometimes just not doable. And that is why it can be helpful to have a lamp as a, a modern day replacement, as it were. But whenever you can, get outside. If it's appropriate, get that shirt off, uh, expose your skin. But even exposing your eyes to this light is going to be sending those messages to each and every cell in your body about what time of day it is. Not only will you see improvement in poor motility with this, but you will also see a lot of other benefits, including reduced pain, better hormone profiles, you'll sleep better. If you're like me, you'll notice better dream recall as well. And my whole relationship 
to light change when I was able to consistently be outside essentially as much of the time as possible. It's just something that you want to start to prioritize and it's free and you will start to find, I promise you, that it gets a little bit sort of addictive because you feel so much better when you practice this on a consistent basis. Now, I appreciate again that a lot of the time we are forced to be inside. We're inside, we're working 40, 50 hour weeks potentially. What we can do here is try and have a desk which is by a window and whenever possible, have that window cracked open a little bit or a lot, depending on the weather. And again, that is just allowing full spectrum sunshine in, again, telling ourselves what time of day it is and therefore what should be happening. I hope you find this video interesting. I hope you find it helpful. I'll provide links to uh, the products that I use, uh, a book that I highly recommend reading if you need more convincing about the benefits of photobiomodulation. Um, and I'll share previous videos connected with this um, throughout this video that you would have seen as well. Any questions, then obviously leave a comment below uh, and happy red light therapying.